Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Su Su Long Shlong Shlong Ten Man Normal in the Terrace of the Endless Springs. Hello. And this boss has a stupid name, but it does have a very good. It is a very good encounter, and nevertheless, it's got two phases, and it's like a bit of lifriery, and oh, it's madness, I tell you. For this encounter, you want to bring two tanks, three healers, and a mixed DPS makeup, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and the fight, in short, is two phases: it's day phase and night phase, um, and it will switch between both, like. Once his energy is full, like he'll fill up his energy, um, and once he does transition, his energy will reset again. Yeah. And that's more or less how he transitions. And first off, we're going to be talking about the night phase. And in the night phase, the boss is damageable, and this is the phase where you want to be DPSing the boss down the whole time. Um, now, the boss does have a couple of mechanics that he'll be fucking you about with, and we'll be going through them right now. In the whole of the night phase, you'll constantly be taking AoE ticking damage, um, and there's a debuff on you that, that will stack that increases the damage that you take from this AoE damage. Um, and the only way you can reset your stack by clearing your stack is going inside a sunbeam that will spawn periodically. Now these sunbeams, they'll become smaller and smaller and they'll eventually disappear um, depending on how many people are in them and how long you stand in for them. So mm. it's important that just so you do have them up all the time, that when you do go inside them, that you get the fuck out straight away. There's no need to stand in them. There's no need to hang around inside them. Yeah. Um, and the main reason why you don't really want to hang around inside them is an ability called Nightmares. And this will target a random player and create a a circle underneath them and if you're still in this circle a few seconds later then everyone inside that circle will take like a fair amount of damage but you'll also be feared for three seconds which is really irritating yeah. so make sure that you do not just stand still the whole entire fight and that you watch your feet and avoid this circle he also has a tank uh, breath, as every dragon should do and does, which is lovely. Um, and this does a high amount of damage, and it also increases the amount of shadow damage you take by 100% uh, for 30 seconds. And of course, um, this is shadow damage done to you. So what you want to be doing is taunt every other breath off of each other. However, if you do have to take a breath because um, like time has fucked you up or something like that, then just make sure you use a large cooldown and let your healers know you're going to be taking a shit ton of damage. Yeah. Also, of course, you're going to be taking quite a lot more damage if you have this debuff from all the other abilities. So it is actually quite important that you might want to drop your stacks more frequently than everyone else by going in these sunbeams. And that more or less is the night phase. It's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you reset your stack by going inside the sunbeams. You need to make sure that you don't get hit by these spinny little circles. And you need to make sure that when you are tanking the boss, that you never face the boss at the raid because the breath will fucking destroy them. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to note is that as a tank, you will also receive the AoE ticking debuff that increases the damage you take. You need to make sure that you drop your stacks as well. So you also need to communicate with your raid when you are going to drop it. And ideally, you want to drop your stack by going in the sunbeams when you're not tanking mm. but if you are tanking then you need to be aware that your raid needs to know because yeah they don't want to get breathed on so as we said the boss does have an energy bar and then once that does fill up he will switch to phase so he'll go from night into day phase and then suddenly the boss is all lovely to you and he wants to be friends and you've got to heal him up so your objective in this particular phase is to deal with numerous adds that spawn um, and the healers need to heal up the boss and the way that it works is that his health bar inverts. Let's just say for example when the night phase finished he was on, I don't know, 80% health. When he goes into the uh, day phase he'll be on 20% health mm -hmm. um, and then when you heal him up, so there you heal him up to 40% health, when you go back to the night phase he'll be on 60% health. However if he reaches 0% life during the healing phase which is the day phase then it's a wipe, the boss will just despawn and then yeah you're fucked. So you need to make sure that you don't fuck up the day phase. And we're going to go through it now. Now the boss himself only does one ability, uh, which is you got to kind of revolve yourself around this ability, which is uh, Sun Breath. Now this just deals a massive amount of damage to all ads in front of the boss, but it will also buff players by giving them 500% extra healing for 6 seconds and also gives you 25% of your maximum mana back. This is fucking nuts for healing the boss. It's like as essential as the clouds on Valifria, yeah. for example. You need to get them because you want to, you know, you want to heal up the boss as quick as possible. One thing to note is that this breath not only does it give you mana, but if you're a rogue, for example, it will give you more energy. Um, if you're a warrior, it'll give you rage, stuff like that. So this breath generally is good for everyone. You should stand in it. It is good. So apart from the boss doing that breath, it'll also spawn ads, and there's three different types of ads. Now, one of the ads is, is called Embodied Terror. Uh, and this won't really do anything, you need to just pick it up as a tank and you need to make sure that you tank it in front of the boss because if the adds get hit by the breath they take a ridiculous amount of damage so it's like it, it's a lot easier for your DPS because the boss can just kill him for you. Um, but yeah, he doesn't really do much apart from one ability called Terrorize and this will affect a random player and the boss and it will apply a horrible dot that removes percentage health um, and this is dispellable. 
but it means you need to dispel the boss as well. And the one on the boss needs to be dispelled instantly. Yeah. That one is far more important than dispelling the one on players. And ideally, you want to just assign one healer for that. Uh, just for dispelling the boss as soon as possible. If you're quick enough, you can dispel it without it ticking once on the boss. So you need to make sure that you're very, very quick with it. It will save you a lot of time. Now, when one of these terrors dies, um, five of these little ads called Fright Spawns uh, will appear from um, the corpse of one embodied terror. And um, they are very, very, very simple. All they do is cast a fear, which deals damage and can be dispelled as well. It's a massive pain in the ass. So what you really want to do is tank them in the beam. So, of course, they'll be taking a shit ton of damage as well as being stunned by the beam. Um, They'll just get destroyed. They'll yeah, get they'll absolutely, get absolutely destroyed. destroyed. And uh, one thing that you actually may want to do is kill the embodied terror just before breath is about to come in, in order so when all the ads spawn, they're immediately stunned. So you can kill them within that stun, and uh, with, and they have all that extra damage. Then no one gets feared. And the beam more or less one shots yeah. these ads every single time, so it makes it so you don't need to worry about these ads. Just when they do spawn, tank them, wait for a breath. The breath will one shot them. Now, apart from the embodied terror, and of course the little ads that spawn after the terrors, you get unstable shah. Now these ads won't do anything apart from just move towards the boss. You can't tank them or anything like that. Um, and the idea is once they reach the boss, they do a ridiculous amount of damage to him. They hit him for about 5 mil mm. um, and then they'll just disappear. And obviously you don't want that to happen because that is so much damage for, that you'll need to heal up or re-damage again in the night phase because of the health invert. Yeah. Um, However, these ads can be CC'd, you can death grip them, they don't have a lot of health and three of them will spawn. So what you want to do is just assign your DPS to go on individual ones and work out all your CCs. Death grips and stuff like that are absolutely fantastic here, but they're very, very weak, they're very, mm. very easy to kill. Now they will do an ability called Unstable Bolt, which just deals, it does, it deals quite a lot of damage to be fair, and they do cast it almost like constantly. However, every time they do it, they also do damage to themselves, so mm. you just need to heal it up. Yeah. Simple as that. Just to summarize this phase, you need to make sure that you're stood in front of the boss and make sure that you're receiving the, the buff from the beam, and you need to make sure that you're healing the boss if you don't have to heal the raid. You need to make sure that you tank the embodied terrors in front of the boss and that the DPS kill them, and when they die and when the ads spawn, just let the boss do the breath on them and that will finish those ads off. And while this is going on, you need to make sure that you're killing all the unstable shards that are spawning, which are very, very easy to deal with. You wait for 100 energy to go by, and then it will switch to night phase. Then you do your night phase, then you do your day phase, night phase, day phase, until the boss either reaches 100% health during the day phase, and then, yeah, GG, or you kill him in the night phase. Mm. Either of them work, and then you get free loot. Yeah, it's a very, very good fight. It's very clever. I like it a lot. So thank you for watching, guys. If this guide did help you out, then please do give it a thumbs up. It does help us out quite a lot. And make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see other 10-man normal guides by Fat Boss, please do click upon the annotations you see on your screen now. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.